ladies and gentlemen, good morning from uh, Canada, Toronto. I today have a very special guest with me, the uh, CEO, President and CEO of uh, Visit Pittsburgh, my friend, Jared Barker. Jared, welcome to our platform. Hi, Samara. It's so good to see you again. We've known each other for so many years in all parts of the globe, so it's nice to be reconnected again. And I can tell you now, through this platform, there are many back home in the Middle East, you know, they must be saying, there he goes, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, Jared, thank you so much. Uh, I believe that you've just recently joined on this position, uh, but you've been with uh, Visit Pittsburgh for, for some time. Our town hall today is planned around the, the entire recovery process of post-COVID uh, era. Uh, call it madness, call it uh, uh, futuristic, you know, that, but U.S. is the uh, one country that has opened before other countries. You know, you are already on the process of opening up. And the world is living through unprecedented time. Our industry, tourism and uh, travel and tourism industry is the one that has been hit the most. By, by some estimates, the recovery that is going to take place with this industry is going to be the longest and the harshest. And, the, and some are even predicting three to four years for a few of the destinations. I want to really, really get your insights. Today, talk to our viewers, you know, that as a head of a tourism uh, organization, tourism board, that what are the measures that you are taking that the rest of the world can learn from? Well, that's a great question. You know, this is, this is a process that we're all maneuvering and navigating through collectively and independently at the same time. It's interesting. This, this pandemic is unlike anything we've ever seen before in our, in our lifetimes. Certainly within the travel industry, we've, we've faced disruptions before, regionalized disruptions, in some cases more intra-regional disruptions and in, in, in different cases like the financial crisis of 2008, 2009. It was a global effect. And we're certainly seeing the global effect from this pandemic, um, but to the levels of, of, of disruption that we've never seen. This, these, are, these are situations that we're trying to navigate where we just don't have a playbook. And that's something that destinations around the world, certainly here in the United States, are really trying to figure out as we go, as we go forward. Um, the, the disruption that we had seen was abrupt. It certainly affected all of our destinations almost immediately, almost overnight. And that's across all of our various tourism verticals. For us here in, in Pittsburgh, and this is very much the case across the, across the United States. Can you just States, give us a little bit of um, uh, idea about Pittsburgh as a destination? Because for viewers outside United States, they may not be very familiar. The scale uh, of the region, just very, very quick, uh, quick insight, you know, that Absolutely. product. Well, I'm always, I'm always happy to talk about Pittsburgh. So I can give you a, a very brief overview. So Pittsburgh is, is a, is a, is a destination that sits within the state of Pennsylvania. As many people will be aware of, we sit in the Northeast part of, of the United States. Uh, tourism is a big part of what happens here in, in, in Pittsburgh and really throughout our region. We are a, a county organization. We focus on developing the tourism industry across Allegheny County, which is where the city of Pittsburgh is, is, is located. Tourism within Allegheny County is a $4.6 billion industry. We oh, employ wow. over 43,000 people within the tourism industry in, in Allegheny County, and we contribute $400 million in state and local tax revenues. So it is a big it part a of- significant the size. It is very much. We we are we we welcome close to 30 million visitors every single year into Allegheny County. A majority of those are day visitors that are coming from our surrounding region, um, but then quite a few of those people are obviously overnight visitors coming for various reasons. Okay, all right. So, uh, so t tell us um, that how your tourism authority board is playing a role. What what is the role that uh, you you are playing? How the collaboration with the government is going? First thing for us is is there um, uh, you know is there any financial support that the U.S. government is offering you uh, at the moment? I mean, how how are you guys coping? That's a that's a there's, there's a lot of answers in the question you just asked. So there is there is in, in the United States we have several layers of government. Certainly that destination marketing organizations like Visit Pittsburgh are engaged with. For us here in in our local market, we have engagement on a city level. We have city government that are very supportive of 
of what we do and what the tourism industry represents for the economy. We have county level government, which again, we represent Allegheny County. So we're closely tied to county government. Then of course, state government with the, with the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and then federal government. So Throughout, are there any waivers, any subsidies, incentives, or how, um, you know, for the tourism industry, I'm not talking about Visit uh, Pittsburgh, but the industry in general, to support them through this? There is for businesses. There is not necessarily for destination marketing organizations like yeah. Visit Pittsburgh or any DMO across the, across the country, even though there's a lot of work being done on the federal and, and in many cases, state and local levels. Um, lobbying work to get a lot of our organizations included in stimulus packages um, as we move forward. But most of the stimulus packages that have come out, certainly on a state and on a federal level, are really targeting supporting our businesses and making sure that our businesses can retain their workforce, as well as hopefully get them up and running again as they're allowed to based on the, on the laws and the guidelines. Right. Okay, okay. And, uh, um, Tell us now, you are almost open, right? I mean, things are uh, on track to opening up. Uh, what are some of the initiatives that you as a head of the tourism uh, body there are putting in place that uh, you know, we, we can a little bit learn from, or maybe it's, it's the same as everywhere else. Give us some insights. I saw something on your LinkedIn profile a while ago. There were some measures being taken at the uh, airport for hygiene and cleanliness. But is there anything which is really unique and, and different? In the, and what's the rollout like? You know, because it's one thing to, pr to put these initiatives together on the papers and documents, and you can have um, McKinsey's and PwC's, you know, ha helping destinations put them. But what does the rollout look like? And what's the take on it? Is the industry behind this? Uh, absolutely. One of the things that we've seen come out of this, this disruption is a community approach to problem solving. We have a, a community approach to creating solutions here locally. You pointed out the airport's efforts. That is a cornerstone to everything we're doing to rebuild the travel industry, certainly here in southwestern Pennsylvania. The, the airport is a really good example of how they brought even non-traditional uh, industries and companies into this solution. They've worked with our local robotics companies and they're developing some really interesting autonomous robotic solutions to cleaning a lot of the public areas of the airport, which is just bad. It, it's fascinating. And a lot of what they've done are cutting edge and first of its kind. So it's great to see those kind of initiatives coming into the marketplace, being born here in Pittsburgh, and certainly will be able to go out into other parts of, of the country and around the world. But right. for us, it really is making sure that we have a recovery plan that is well thought out, that is community focused and community con driven, uh, that everyone's uh, contributing to the development of that recovery plan. And that's very much where we are now. Our recovery plan is broken across our various business verticals. So we have our business events strategy, we have our sports events strategy, and then of course our leisure tourism strategy. We feel for our market that our leisure tourism is going to be the first vertical to recover. We're okay. going to see people starting to come back sooner than we will see for our sports and our business events, simply just from an isolation and a social distancing standpoint. Um, that's our, that's mm, interesting. So you said leisure, sports, uh, business events, and what's the fourth, the fourth one, if you can? Those are the three. Those are the three verticals that we okay. focus on. Yeah. Okay. And, and uh, can you talk a little bit about sports events uh, that how you, uh, yeah. Yeah. Sports is, sports is a big part of, of what we do. Certainly here in Pittsburgh, we, we talk about the city of champions, our professional leagues are, are, are world-class or champions in, in their own right in, in a lot of different areas. Our focus from a sports standpoint is much more on the collegiate level, on college sports, university sports, mm -hmm. but also on recreational and competitive sports. We do a lot of work with, with universities and colleges across the country with the NCAA here in America um, to make sure that we're, we're a home for, for sporting events across all different uh, spectrums okay. of sport. So what we want to do is to make sure that we have the ability to bring these sports events back. But even within business events, the same rule applies. We have to be able to create an environment that is based on health and safety, health and safety for our businesses, for our workforce, for our residents as well as for the competitors who would be coming in for sporting events. Same right. thing with business it's events. It's peace of mind, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So 
every part of our, our, of our recovery plan is focused on the health and safety aspects. We started a few weeks ago working on getting various information, again, from government officials, from various businesses, uh, national or operators who are, who are operating here in Pittsburgh and in our destination, to make sure that we understand the health and safety guidelines that they're putting forward. Marriott has rolled out a really impressive plan, Hilton, Hyatt, all of these brands, of course, are represented in our local market. So we're taking that information and aggregating that with what our convention center is doing, what our sports arenas are doing, making sure that we have one collective place where travelers, event organizers, businesses can go to get information on health and safety guidelines within our community. Like, like, like almost like a one-stop shop. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's important. That's absolutely yeah. important. There's so much information out in the marketplace that we need to be able to, to put that, organize it and, and make it available in one place. And, and have you created any committees and subcommittees and action task force? And We have. We have a health and safety committee, which is, is led by Visit Pittsburgh, but it's made up of, of members of our community from across the tourism ecosystem, as well as with our government officials. We have, for example, a webinar coming up with our health and safety committee this next week, where the county executive will be part of that discussion, discussing what it is that the county is looking for from us as, a, as an industry when it comes to developing health and safety guidelines. Okay. The, the, the county government has been instrumental in, in everything that we do as far as trying to get our community to come together under what government regulations are, are putting forward. Okay, then that, that, that's uh, really interesting. And um, uh, Jared, just um, give us a little bit of a sense of uh, that um, you've got convention centers and big venues there um, uh, as well. Are they coming together with you? You know, uh, and uh, what are the policies and uh, that? Uh, you know, are they coming up with their own uh, health and safety regulations? Because what about uh, the big events and festivals as well? You know, um, um, because there is always a concern with festival. There's a, you know, these are not your smart gatherings and how do you monitor? Because our kids go and attend these concerts and all. Yes, so give us a sense of that. Well, we're fortunate in, in the city of Pittsburgh, ASM Global, which is a global operator of convention centers, arenas, and other facilities, actually it are the, it's the management company for our convention center, as well as our main sports arena, which is PPG Arena, where we play, where our, our Pittsburgh Penguins play uh, professional hockey. So ASM Global has put out a program called Venue Shield. Venue Shield is a comprehensive uh, process of, of making sure that health and safety guidelines across all of their venues are meeting the highest quality practice or best practices um, anywhere. So we're, we're really fortunate to have such a global operator okay. which operates some of our primary venues. Then our sports and exhibition authority also are it's, it's the property owner for those venues as well as Heinz Field which is our, our U.S. football arena as well as PNC Park which is where our Pittsburgh Pirates, our national baseball team plays. So that organization is making sure that there is great health and safety guidelines across all of our major venues. So we're really fortunate from that standpoint. And is it really only about health and safety guidelines? You know, what else a destination needs to, to do to, uh, to get those visitors back in? Is it uh, other health than health and safety? Uh, health and safety is important, but for us, it really is just opening these businesses. These businesses that we have in our local community, and this is the same for destinations around the world, in order for us to open our businesses, there has to be a sense of confidence, certainly by our political leadership, but also from our business owner standpoint as, and as well as from our consumer standpoint, that health and safety guidelines are in place so that they actually have confidence to be able to come back and, and, and start experiencing destinations the way they would have before. It's important for us to make sure that that's the bedrock to everything we, that we do. However, for us as well, beyond that, we wanna make sure that we are rebuilding a tourism industry. For us, it's about a layered effect of reopening our destination. For us, we're, we're fortunate again, like many destinations, we have a lot of outdoor activities that are available. We have thousands of acres of parks and so recreation. There's a lot of focus on outdoor activities. That's uh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. So that's where we're starting. Uh, you know, we've got we've got our outdoor areas. We've got hundreds of miles of 
of hiking and cycling trails and so forth in and around our, our city. So that's our, that's our first layer of offering when it comes to our tourism industry. Our restaurants and our distilleries and breweries are getting ready to open again in the next couple of weeks within expanded guidelines from the, from the state to say how they can operate. So that's our next level. Our museums and galleries are working right now on how they can bring people into their facilities, let them maneuver through and experience that are the various exhibits and so forth to make sure that that is available within a safe and secure environment. So there's another layer of offering that we have. So this is, is it's all about a layering solution, making sure that we start with what is available today. And as, over, as the weeks progress, we're opening businesses that help us build out a complete tourism industry once again right and and do, are you targeting internationally as well normally i'm not talking about covid but is pittsburgh a uh, destination for international travelers we are but we're also aware of the fact that international is going to be probably the last opportunity that we have in our in our recovery pipeline we have a great relationship with british airways which has direct service to to pittsburgh uh, condor out of germany is another airline that has direct service into okay. pittsburgh and then of course, all of our domestic airlines who are, are servicing international destinations, usually through another gateway hub here in the US. Which is a near uh, gateway, just um, uh, excuse my geography. So it's, no would be from JFK to? Could be, could be New York or Boston, those are, or, or Baltimore. Those are all three very popular and I'll add on Washington DC as well. All four of those are major international hubs and are typical gateways for Pittsburgh because those are within about a 35 to 45 minute flight from Pittsburgh. So those would be our direct connections or hub cities for a lot of our domestic airlines. Um, but we are still focusing on international. We, we continue to maintain relationships certainly within European markets. That's our first opportunity for our destination like Pittsburgh within the international context. So we continue to invest in those markets, but we recognize that as we move forward, again, a phased approach will take place, certainly from a leisure tourism standpoint, it'll be our local and regional market, our drive market. We're blessed to have a, a large population um, within, a, within a, a two to three hour radius of Pittsburgh. That will then lead into our domestic short haul flights and then eventually into our international long haul flights. And, and um, are you tying up with any other regions? You know, that um, you want to have twin services or create a bubble with them or, you know, have a closer cl collaboration uh, with them. Um, tell us about that. We typically position ourselves within the Great Lakes region. So within from Pittsburgh up to Cleveland, over to Chicago, all of these cities that border the Great Lakes of the US, that is where we find the most success, certainly within the international markets. Tour operators are able to sell a package within the Great Lakes region. Again, coming from Chicago down through all the way to Pittsburgh, this is, a, this is an area that has some really amazing destinations. And again, our connection to the Great Lakes region is where we found the most success when it comes to regional positioning. Right. And Jared, I'm, you know, I've known you for so many years. Um, I, I just wa want to ask you as a person to person, you know, and as somebody from, from the industry, like, and like I've been and you've been around, you know, we've seen a lot of ups and downs and all. What's your personal take on this? My personal take is that we're gonna come out of this stronger than ever before. The population of the world will continue to want to go and explore new places. As human beings, we wanna stay connected with one, one another. We certainly are, are attracted to, to various competitions within sports. We wanna connect through the various business events. We wanna make sure that we're going out and experiencing new places and new destinations. Individuals, human beings will continue to want to move forward and want to travel. I know as an industry, we are a resilient industry. We will come through this. This is a temporary disruption, but it is only temporary. We will have the opportunity to examine ourselves as an industry, as individual organizations, to streamline and make the appropriate adjustments wherever we need to and wherever we can, and we'll come out of this in a much stronger place. Uh, Jared, on that positive note, and I couldn't agree with you more. I have <laughs> totally aligned with you on this that we will come out of it. And I also believe that tourism, uh, although uh, the predictions are is the last uh, to rise, but I believe it will be that important critical glue that will bring and patch the world together. Absolutely. And, 
And on that note, thank you so much, Jared, and good luck in uh, your new position and role. Thank you, Samara. It's so great to be connected with you again, and I look forward to many more conversations. Me too. Thank you. Thank you.